Yard sales are a ton of work and I'm gonna tell you everything I'm doing to prepare to make it the best one ever. Welcome to Flippin' and Punch It, and today is Tuesday. We got a long day ahead of us, man. I gotta pull some orders here. I got to prepare for this freaking yard sale. So we're gonna pull some orders here. Also, too, I got an update from the order I couldn't find yesterday, but let's jump into this. All right, first order we, we sold is a Super Bowl patch. These things have actually been selling really well for us. All right, first one is San Francisco 49ers and the Chargers. 49er stuff is super hot right now, especially with Brock Purdy, McCaffrey. I mean, listen, they went to the NFC Championship game last year, or the previous year, lost to the Philadelphia Eagles. My Philadelphia Eagles, unfortunately, lost to the Super Bowl. But let's not talk about that. And then last year, they made it to the Super Bowl and lost to the Chiefs. But their stuff is super hot. So if you guys have any 49er stuff, now's a good time to start listing it. The NFL draft is right around the corner at the end of April. And football is going to be in the news once again. So anyway, we got $24.99 plus shipping for this. This came for that massive Disney lot I bought. And uh, we're going to do really well on these. Better than what I expected. So. All right, I told you guys we sold another patch. This one is actually the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers. These patches are actually pretty cool. The back of these cards actually has a list of like all the stats for the game. We end up getting, I think, $19.99 plus shipping for this. Or was it $17.99? I don't know. $17.99 or $19.99. I'll put it up here so you guys know. But we got just a $19.99 plus shipping. All right, let's give you guys an update from yesterday. I couldn't find this Funko. Well, actually, I know what happened to Funko Pop. I actually blew it out on whatnot and I forgot to delist it and it sold. Luckily, a viewer purchased three Funko Pops, so they were super cool about the situation. And uh, they just said, I let them know, hey, if you want something else in my store? Um, another Funko Pop, even if it was higher, I would just swapped it out. But they said, nah, they're cool, just issue a refund. And uh, the next comment was, well, now you got something to talk about in your next video. So, which I thought was pretty funny. So, anyway, I'm going to issue a full, re full refund for that one and part of the um also some of the shipping back to them and then they're, they're i've been talking about these warhammer books remember it's a it's a role-playing game if you guys ever see them out and about pick them up because they've been such a nice surprise everyone that i've got i think there's i've gotten like 10 books and supplement books from them that have to do with like the warhammer game and I think only one of them was under like 10 bucks, which I didn't list. So all the other ones were like 10 bucks or more, usually around like the 15 to 20 dollar range. But we, we actually sold this one book, it's the third print. And Warhammer 4000, it's actually a big thick book here. We ended up selling this one for $24.99 plus shipping. Now, here's an interesting thing for my research, I thought I had the second print. So, because it actually says second print inside of it. So I list this second print and some eBay, someone on eBay sent me a message, hey, just to give you a heads up, this is not the second print, it's actually the third print and sent me a link letting me know like, hey, I can understand your confusion, but it's, they give me an example X, Y, Z. So whoever that was on eBay, thank you very much for doing that. I do appreciate it. Let me ask you guys, when you guys see an error on in someone's listing, do you guys just let it be? Or do you actually message the seller to let them know, hey, this is wrong or there's a mistake in here? I've done it a couple times in the past. Most sometimes I just let it be, but I do appreciate that. You know, usually if I message a sellers because I was trying to buy something and like the shipping charge was like ninety nine dollars, should have been nine ninety nine. They just hit the the decimal point in the wrong place. I've had the, I've done that too in the past, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. All right, next time we sold, we actually sold some comic books. These are Robin comic books. Let's be honest, who likes Robin? I mean, these are really cool. They have this like holograph. Total 90s vibe there. But Robin here, these Robin ones, and then I think there's like, all these are number ones. So a big lot of them. Just blowing out some of the comic books here. I had this listed up for a long time. I just kept dropping the price, dropping the price. And uh, if you guys have ever seen any of my listings that has a wooden floor, that's one of my old listings. And my dog's crying in the background. But anyway, um, I end up getting $6.99 plus shipping, not much. Old listing, just happy to see it go. Decided I'm gonna try to tackle us down. So just started digging through this garage. Just start to clear this spot out over here. There's a bunch of old stock car stuff, I know that. 
these are just boxes here and then over here it looks really bad this i'm gonna put this giant fan out i had it so long when i used to have a uh, home gym during the pandemic i built out a, my two-car garage into a home gym at that time had all kind of like olympic style weights because i was you know when i was wrestling at my old house this what i use to try to keep me cool but it's too big i want to get one of the smaller ones for the garage here and so hopefully i can sell that at the yard sale but this is cool i didn't even know this was out here so i found this old bag I'm digging through and there's all these old cameras probably from like the 50s 60s maybe i don't, I don't know yeah i think this one's from the 60s but. you know i don't know i'll just blow this there's a bunch of like lenses a bunch of other stuff in here but in this old bag we're gonna blow that out all right so i just got a message from a buyer they bought something for me on easter sunday it's tuesday morning right now and they're upset that their item hasn't shipped out yet. Now I have three day handling on my, my listings just for the fact that if I travel or do anything. So I sent the buyer a message to say, hey, just let you know, you purchased an item on, on Easter Sunday. I was away for the holiday. And you know, your item is scheduled to be shipped out here. And then they started complaining about the shipping. And I was like, well, I use calculated shipping. And anyway, make a long story short, I ended up sending the buyer a message back and say, hey, if you're un unhappy with the shipping and the time is taken for the item to get out, I can issue a full refund and the buyer want to get a full refund. So it's literally been like 36 hours since they purchased the item and they're already upset that the item hasn't been shipped. So I don't know if they need it by a certain time or what the heck the problem was, but more of the story is don't be that buyer. All right, next time we sold, we sold an, an Ozzy Osbourne CD. Once again, I still haven't put away these CDs. So it's still sitting here on the shelf. Ozzy Osbourne. Picked this up at a local yard sale. I paid 15, I think like 15 bucks for a, ton of Ozzy CDs. I had this listed for $14.99. I think I sent them an offer for $12.99. They accepted. So we got $12.99 plus shipping for this. All right. So I talked about how, how much work this yard sale is. Like just going through stuff takes time. So that's taking me like an hour or two every time I do that. But I mean, what do you do with the yard sale? Do you guys pr individually price all your items? Now I know why people don't price items at yard sales because it's a lot of stuff. What I'm thinking about doing. Oh, here. Yeah. So we got some Squishmallows now. We're going to put out Stuff for the kids. Uh, this military. Oh, can it? What is this? I don't know. I know a lot of people always comment on my pick and punching channel that the biggest pet peeve is when they go to yard sales and things aren't priced. Now I know why people don't price items because it's a lot of work. Like I'm going through, I'm like, okay, I need to price all these. I'm like, yeah. So what I'm thinking about doing here is I'm going to have a, like probably five or seven, you know, I think I probably have like eight tables. And I might just put a sign on the table, five bucks, everything on the table. This table, everything, 10 bucks, everything, three bucks, just to make it super easy. Make a dollar table. I don't know. I think that's what we're going to do with all the clothing. We're just going to put tarps down in the driveway. Um, I think we're going to put tarps across our front yard and just literally dump massive loads, probably hundreds of clothing just on there just to blow out. My wife cleared out some of our closet. We had stuff that we picked up over the last couple of years. I had some stuff that just blow out as well, and it's just time. Time to move on. Time to clear it out. It's a lot of work, though. All right, so I got a bunch of, putting this out, sealed VHS at the garage sale. That's all going out there. Tons of video game stuff, PS4, 360, I don't know. Some glassware. This whole thing's filled with Atari games in here. I don't even know what's in here. I haven't, I haven't gone through it, but I'm just going to put it all out. Where else do you find like 100 plus Atari games at a garage sale? Never. You got the Dragon Ball Z fans. These are all Dragon Ball Z Funko Pops. All Dragon Ball Z. Those got to go. You know, one thing I wanted to address in the, I don't know, it was like one of my last couple videos, I talked about... I put the picture up and said I'm failing because Operation CSO was not going the way I wanted to go. You know, we're trying to clear shit out and it just wasn't working. And, you know, one of the comments someone left there on there is like, hey, you're always a very positive person. You'll get through this. And, you know, I still look at this as a positive experience. But I'm a, two reasons why I have this channel. One is to help educate you guys and to help show you guys what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right. So that this way you may be able to take bits of what I do to implement in your own business 
or maybe give you ideas to implement new things into your business. Second one is I use this channel to help keep myself accountable because if I don't, resale can be very lonely and you know, it's not gonna have a boss or coworkers. Well, my, I guess my wife's a boss, but don't tell her I said that. But uh, you know, I don't have coworkers, I don't have a boss here to tell me what to do and what not to do. So I'm, I'm accountable for myself. So by putting it out here on the internet, I feel a social responsibility to you guys to not let you guys down. So it's actually a good thing. And I, I use this as a very positive way, but I will say, you know, making this drastic change, doing this yard sale is, I'm super excited about it. And I'm trying to find ways to make it entertaining for the people because I want people to have a good time. I want them to leave with a smile on their face. I want them to come back in the future if we ever have one again. But also too, I want to do something special for the kids that are there. So I think we're going to set up a, a drink station. You know, I'm so excited for this because I feel like it's almost a new beginning. Like I have hope that I'm going to either clear stuff out and maybe I'll pull everything out. Anything that doesn't sell, maybe I'm just like, you know what? It's going to do be donated. I don't know. I haven't figured that part out yet, but hopefully we'll be able to figure something out here to blow this stuff out. But I want to show you guys a couple things. One is... Well, one is we just got a Macari sale. So let's go over that. Yeah, ironically, a Macari sale. Um, it was an empty Louis Vuitton box. This is hit right here. Pretty cool. And this slides out right here. So had that listed for $24.99. Someone sent me an offer for $20. I accepted. And Papa Punchy came down. He brought down all this sporting stuff. And when I was going through, I pulled this out, which I've never seen before. So maybe you guys can help me. Check out this sweatshirt. It's a Metallica Yankee sweatshirt. I've never seen this logo before. It's super cool. Very unique. Very unique. You know, look at the stitching here, but here it is. So it has a sticker in the back, like, like it was brand new. Size XL. So I thought maybe they sold this at the concert. Metallica did do a concert in Yankee Stadium back in 2011. But you would think I would come across more of these. I saw a bunch of Metallica Yankee pinstripe jerseys, but I never saw this before. So I don't know. Part of me thought maybe someone's it was a bootleg sweatshirt that someone sold in the parking lot. But I mean, the things I think the thing's brand new. I don't think it's ever worn. But I mean, it just has a little fuzzies on it. What size is it? It's size XL. That's my size too. I don't know. Super cool. So Metallica is my favorite band growing up. But I hate the Yankees. I'm a Phillies fan, so I can never rock this, unfortunately. But I gotta figure out a price point. I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do you think something like this is actually worth? I can't find any comps on it. I Googled image the 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 the, the um, Metallica and the Yankees design. Nothing came up with it. So that's what makes me think maybe it was a, someone sold it in the parking lot. I don't know, because usually when people sell in the parking lot, they don't have this other sticker on here. So unless this is the regular sticker from the store, and then they just printed this on. That would make more sense. Yeah, I don't know. So if you guys know anything about this, let me know in the comments down below. All right, so it's the next day. Today's, what day is it? Today's Wednesday. Last night, did a whatnot with Papa Punchin. He just brought me down some random totes full of stuff. Not stuff I normally sell, but we did okay. Packaged all that up with him today, and he realized how much work whatnot is. So that was, made me laugh this morning, but we got that done. Um, let's pull a couple more orders here. <sighs> I got a rough day ahead of me, guys. It's time to go to the dentist. I haven't been to the dentist probably in like two years. Last time with the dentist is when I actually had a day job. I had an appointment to go at the end of last year for a brand, be a brand new patient at my wife's office, and I got sick. And they wouldn't let me come to the office because I was on antibiotics. So they pushed back my appointment six freaking months. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys have a, like a dental office or doctor's office that takes you like three or four or five months to get into? It's the absolute worst. So, would have loved to go to the auction today with Papa Punchin. Unfortunately, I cannot miss this dental appointment because if I don't get in now, I won't get into like Christmas. So, anyway, let's pull a couple orders. We sold this Masters of the Universe figure. Um, I think this is every time. Why? Why do you guys wait? Why do you wait for me? And they drip all over my floor. Now my floor is dirty. I have the worst roommates ever, let me tell you. We saw this Masters of the Universe figure for, I think we had it listed for like $9.99 or $11.99. Ended up selling for $7 plus shipping. Buyer sent me an offer and it's been up there for a couple months. 
I just sold it. Honestly, I thought these Masters of the Universe figures were gonna do a lot better than what they have done so far. They've just been slow sellers. All right, next time we sold is a Star Wars, vintage Star Wars figure from 1984. Uh, this is Return of the Jedi, Han Solo figure from, I think, 1984. It's came in that massive toy lot. I don't have much into this, a couple bucks, maybe a buck or two, but I've got $7.99 plus shipping. And that was a massive toy buy. I got tons of stuff. I've already made my money back 10 times over. But so now for some odd reason, a bunch of Star Wars figures sold this week. It's weird. You know, on eBay, things always go through different rotations and, you know, things may not sell for a while. And then you have like five items that similar sell. By the way, yesterday I went through the garage and pulled out a bunch of more totes and check out some of this stuff. I got a random box full of stuff and here's some board games. This whole tote right here is, is full underneath there. Scale electrics. It's missing one of the cars, but the Brickyard 400. And then this. This is a Ferrari. Now, if this was, if the car was actually in here, there's cars not in here, but if it was in here, this car goes for like four or five hundred bucks, I think. But what it's, what's inside is all the pieces. A lot of the pieces are brand new in the box. So someone could buy that and piece it out and make probably really good money on it. Tomorrow, I plan on going to the storage warehouse to start pulling stuff out there. I'm hoping to bring another, like, between Thursday and Friday, I'm hoping to get another, I don't know, maybe five to ten totes of stuff. We'll see. I'm hoping that when I go there, I can just pull out a ton of stuff for the, uh, for the yard sale. So, all right. So here's a weird one for you guys. You guys always sell me, you guys always see me selling those boxes. And I actually looked at my numbers last night. That's been my number one seller for the last 28 days. I've sold over, I think, 11 or $1,200 in empty boxes, which is absolutely insane to me. Um, but this is even crazy. So these are the Chanel store bags. And, but, See, what's really popular are these, when they come with the flower on them, these flowers actually can sell by themselves. People actually use them for crafting. But we got all these empty bags here. Someone sent me an offer. Had it listed, I think, for like $59.99 or $69.99. Been up there for a while. Someone sent me an offer for, um, someone sent me an offer for 30 bucks or more. I said, you know what, screw it. They were a throw in when I bought out that big collection of stuff. So I had nothing into them. So it was free 30 bucks and it gets them out of my house. So got 30 bucks plus shipping on those. I'm trying to get this, I'm trying to hurry up and get this video done for today because it looks like the end of the world is about to come hit our house right now. There's a tornado warning, like probably like 10 minutes away from us. And the whole sky is completely gray right now. So I don't know. It's going to have like a monsoon about to hit. So I'm trying to get this done. So I get to the post office, hopefully before my uh, dental appointment. And I got to pick my kid up too. I gotta pick up my stepson, so hopefully it doesn't rain till after I get him, get him home. All right, so I sold a slot car. Diablo, right here. Scale Electrics. Had this listed for $39.99. Someone sent me an offer for $25, and I accepted. So I got $25 bucks plus shipping on this. These slot cars have been the nicest surprise ever, guys. If you guys see slot car tracks, slot car books, anything slot car related, spend time looking up because it is worth it, your time. All right, we sold a pair of jeans. Now... The other night, sales were really slow. I wasn't getting any sales, and someone sent me an offer. I had these jeans listed for $29.99. These buckle jeans, they're women's jeans. So I had them listed for $29.99. Someone sent me an offer for $17, and normally I wouldn't accept it. We just haven't caught me at a good time. We were having a slow day, so I accepted it. And I was hoping, <laughs> it was like two or three days now since the buyer bought them and didn't pay for them. So I was like, oh, okay. Perfect, I'm just about to cancel and then relist them and then the buyer paid this morning. So five bucks or less into those jeans. So five into 17, not the biggest, not the biggest uh, sale or not the biggest profit margin, but at the end of the day, you know, it keeps the cash flow coming in, going out. Also too, it happens sometimes. Sometimes when you have this, when you're running this business and sales are super slow one day or back to back days, you will accept less money for your items than you normally would because you need to get the cash flow going. You want to get some activity going in your shop, and it happens. So, I'm not upset. Got things going, and uh, got $17 plus shipping for it. All right, so this next sale is near and dear close to my heart. 
I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan, so it kind of hurt me to sell this, but, you know, when it comes to, like, the nostalgia, when it comes to, like, these old vintage toys, I pretty much go after the ones I had as a kid. I didn't have this one, but it was similar to the ones I did have, so, his name, something Dino, I forget, Diggity Dino, or something, I don't know, in the Cave Turtle. So I had this listed for $39.99, Dingy Dino, in Cave Turtle, so I had it listed for, I think, $39.99, and I think I sent an offer for $29.99, or they sent me an offer, I don't remember, but we got $29.99 plus shipping for this. All right, I'm going to try to quick get through this stuff here real fast. We sold a DVD, Dirty Pear Flash. I have no idea what this is. Some type of Japanese animation. So I picked this up at a yard sale. I bought like probably 100 plus Japanese animation DVDs. I think I paid like 80 bucks for them all. I sold off a giant lot for like 120 bucks right in the beginning. Anything that was like eight bucks or above, I ended up listing. This, I think we sent on best offer. We got $6.99 plus shipping for this. All right, we sold a book. Now, you guys are familiar with um, Doctor Who. I think this goes along with Doctor Who. Something to simulate. Doc? Dale? Actually, I have no idea what this is. BBC TV. If you guys ever see anything from BBC TV, like TV shows and box sets, look them up. They usually could bring some good money. This is from 1978. Picked this up at the flea market in a lot. I think I paid like 40 bucks for a lot of stuff. And we ended up getting $29.99 plus shipping for this. So we sold another slot car, guys. I keep I can't express to you guys how valuable slot car stuff is. This one's actually on the cheaper end. We had it listed for $24.99. Someone sent me an offer for $19.99. And we accepted. So here it is. Scale Electrics. That's a British company, guys. If you see Scale Electrics, pick it up because. Really hard to come by in the U.S. stuff. Um, the distributor, if you look online, most of the distributors are from like England or Germany. And we got $19.99 plus shipping for that. Now this next sale, I am super excited about because as a pair of jeans, I had them listed for $79.99. And someone accepted an offer for $55 and didn't pay for them. So I ended up relisting them and they ended up selling for $79.99. Rock Revival, guys, if you guys see this, pick them up. They're very flashy. Um, they are, they're like 100, 100 plus dollar jeans if you guys do see them out and about, but Rock Revival, remember that name. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. I gotta ship all this stuff out. Guys, we are so close to hitting 2,000 subs on this channel, so please make sure you like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Until next time, make sure you guys keep flipping and punching.